Tom here from Lawrence System, and RAID is not a backup. But backing up your TrueNAS to Backblaze is a backup, and it's a great way to backup. We've been using Backblaze for quite a while, and specifically, I wanted to mention there's no affiliate links for Backblaze. We're not a reseller of Backblaze. This video is not endorsed by Backblaze. I just want to get that out of the way to let you know that Backblaze is a company we've been using by choice, not because there's some other commission involved in it but we do like their pricing. It actually is really good. We'll get to that in the details of the video and all the details, of course, are time indexed down below. If you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you'd like to help minimize the sponsors on this channel and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a button here to join YouTube or Patreon and your support is greatly appreciated. And there's links down below where to get cat shirts and other fun things. But there is no Backblaze affiliate link, like I said. Now, first, why Backblaze? And according to their marketing, they're the easy, affordable, trusted storage solution. Now, we use them for more than TrueNAS. We actually use this for some of our WordPress hosting backup and lots of other little things to keep the topic on topic. We're going to talk, though, just about doing it with TrueNAS. But I always bring it up and mention they have all kinds of support, like their B2 command line tool for their B2 buckets. Uh, they have all the pricing breakdowns very available and i'll leave links to all this so if you need to calculate some of the storage pricing including an entire storage pricing calculator and there's a little bit of nuance when you get into cloud bucket storage because that's why i brought up that they have these transaction prices but nonetheless they're very public about everything so you can calculate upfront how much it's going to cost you to store a set amount of data because this question comes up quite a bit when people ask well what if i had a 200 terabyte server that's a lot to back up Yes, it is. Yes, you should back it up. Ideally, you'd want at least two copies on site. I know that can be challenging because, well, when you build out a 200 terabyte server, that's not cheap. Then when you want to build a second one to have a mirror of it in your office for redundancy, that's not cheap. And backing up in Backblaze, good news is that's relatively cheap to back up a lot of storage. But we want to go and jump right into the details here of exactly how it works. First, when you sign up, this is actually uh, something I really like, is you get 10 gigs of free. The first 10 gigs is just free. So without putting in a credit card, uh, this is something I've liked, and hopefully they continue doing this. So if you're watching the future and have discontinued this service, sorry. But as of right now, uh, you get 10 gigs for free. All you have to do is verify a phone number that you have that you can receive text messaging at and verify your email address, but not put your credit card in, and you'll get 10 gigs of free storage, which is pretty cool. Um, and there's storage pricing, and we do actually pay for and have a business account where we have a lot of buckets and a lot of different permissions and all the details set up properly. And it's still very reasonable for as volumes of data that we back up on here. I've been really happy and the restores have been really reasonable as well. They also do support if you need to ship them drives because your bandwidth constrained and you've need to get 400 terabytes to them they do have a seed option to do the initial seed and they'll mail you drives back if you need data back they got all those options but now let's actually get started with exactly what are buckets and how does that work so i've already signed up this demo account that's why there's nothing here and yes i'll be exposing api keys here that will be destroyed later so yeah, don't worry about it. No need to let me know. Tom, you forgot to blur something out. I didn't forget to blur anything out. I made sure I don't have to blur anything out because I'll be destroying all these buckets of random data I create. So let's go ahead and create a bucket. And this will be the true NAS backup bucket. Now, when you're creating the buckets, you can only create 100 buckets per account as of right now in April of 2021. But uh, you can create as many subfolders or files in the bucket. So you may want to create like one bucket for a particular type of storage and then create like if you have a group of true NASs, you can have them all going all into the same bucket. For simplicity, we're only going to create one bucket and then one subfolder underneath, but I just want to give people the idea. And of course, because you can sign up for free, it's pretty low risk for you to mess around with these. So we're going to go ahead and say backup bucket name true NAS YouTube demo. So there we go. Do we want it to be private or public? Now, I do like that it defaults to private. And the idea, and we're going to only really use the private one, but the idea would be if you do set the public bucket up, you can upload a file and then share out that particular file to someone. Let's say you have a large video you wanted to share. You could set the bub bucket to public, upload it from TrueNAS, not using the encryption. We'll get to that shortly. And then you would be able to share out that file and use their bandwidth in order to allow people to download it. And we actually have some video editing clients that do this. So just create things, have it synchronized with the bucket, and then they go ahead and 
create a share link to that particular bucket file. But that does require that you don't encrypt things ahead of time. You don't do the encryption here. They have no knowledge of the encryption because I know there's already some people that may be wondering about how do you trust Backblaze. I don't trust any cloud company. Just add Backblaze to the list of my zero trust. You encrypt beforehand. We'll cover that in the TrueNAS system. Uh, encryption, and I this is why I brought that up. They do have it. I don't bother with their encryption. I'm going to encrypt it on my own and manage my own encryption so it has no relationship to how they handle it. So I'm going to skip over that right here. So we're going to say private, disable. And for now, we're going to leave this disabled, but they do have an option to make certain things immutable. And this is really important where you may want things to head up there to archive, but never have the ability for the bucket to de be deleted, any of the files in that particular bucket. But we're going to go ahead and leave it like this. So here's our TrueNAS demo, and we'll leave it pretty much like I said default here. Having the bucket, we have to go over to TrueNAS and put the bucket information in, but we're going to do that with an API key. So we're going to go over here to the app keys, and we're going to create a new one. Add new application key, Tom's TrueNAS demo key. What bucket does this have access to? This right here, read and write, read only. These are the permissions you can set or allow listing bucket names. If you're using S3 compatibility the for the Amazon S3 storage type, you'd have to check that. We're not going to. File name prefix, um, sure, why not? Uh, we'll call this YouTube demo and we're gonna head and create that key. Now, of note, this application key right here that was generated for us, we are going to copy it into the clipboard or I could just, you know, right click and copy it. When I go off this page or refresh this page, that goes away. I do not get to see it anymore. So make sure you get a copy of this key. So we'll go over here and here's where we put it inside of TrueNAS. So you go under system, under cloud credentials. We already have one bucket here for my production system. Uh, the foreshadowing, yes, is does support Google Drive and a lot of other systems. I'll be doing some future videos on that, more specifically like the Google Drive. I've got a demo on that we've been using. And we're gonna hit add. We're gonna head and choose Backblaze B2. Call it YouTube demo. And we're gonna put the application in here. Then we're gonna go back over to here and put the key ID in and hit save. Now, those are the only things you need to have. And we can hit verify credentials to verify those work. Credentials are valid, hit submit. And now we have them. Now you can get those back out by going in here and clicking edit. You'll be able to see the key ID and the application ID. That pair we created has whatever parameters and and security, and we'll actually just go ahead and click on a different spot, click back over here. Now we can't see it. So we can delete this key, but we can't edit it. We can't change it. So if I were to lose that TrueNAS information, it would be gone. Good news is when you back up TrueNAS, it'll back up the key information you have when you do the backup file inside of TrueNAS itself, like the configuration backup. But now we've got this bucket created. We've got it allowed to talk to this bucket right here. Here's the capabilities of it. And now we can actually go inside and set the task up. So this is all ready to go. And we're going to go over here to tasks and we're going to go over to cloud sync task and we're going to add one. And this is where they've done a great job of making this easy. So we'll go here and uh, let's call it demo. I don't feel like typing as much, which is the credentials you're going to choose. Not production, but YouTube demo one. Perfect. There's our YouTube demo. Are we going to pull or push now? This can also be used completely in reverse. For example, I mentioned we use things like WordPress backups that we have all landed in a bucket. In that case, we would like a copy local. We host WordPress in the cloud, not on any local servers we have physically in my building. And you can then take the Backblaze buckets that we've created through our hosting accounts that are all going over to Backblaze for a landing spot. But, you know, one spot is not necessarily, in case something ever happened to Backblaze, a good idea. So then you can create another copy, then another cloud storage provider, or in our case, we can pull all the data back out. So this does work in reverse if you wanted to have a copy. But in this case, I want to back up my TrueNAS to Backblaze. So we're going to do a push. And do you want to copy, sync, or move? Generally speaking, you're going to want to sync. Copy will keep doing it over and over again without checking if those files are there. It'll just go, well, let me send all the data again. Let me send all the data again. And obviously that may not be what you want. You want an initial upload and then synchronize the changes that are occurring. So we chose sync. 
and it also lets you know that they will be deleted. That's back to if you would have clicked the immutable option for the bucket. So if a delete happens locally, it doesn't uh, get pushed up there, but you get the idea of that. The little description's right here. We're gonna go to mount, and we already have a demo folder. And just to give you an idea, I have an open terminal here. This is some of the files we have in here, just some random documents I dragged over, something about backups and antivirus and pricing sheets. You know, data that looks like it might be kind of important and uh, that I'd like to have backed up. Controls, do we want a daily backup, hourly backup? Why not? Hourly would be great, right? So you're doing this every hour, seeing if there's any changes and sending them over there. You can tie this with your snapshots and have it taking snapshots as well, like the standard ZFS snapshots inside of TrueNAS. You can set prescript and postscript in case there's some type of script you want to run that does something in there, but definitely some options. Uh, upload size chunk, 96 med, use fast list. This is a use Fewer transactions in exchange for more RAM. This is like a couple little tuning options you can put on there if you'd like using the R clone, which is in the back end. And it's a way to speed the whole thing up in short, but they do all documentation. Like I said, I don't want to get too far off topic, but they have the documentation on what that feature does linked right there. We'll leave that off. We don't really need it. And remote encryption for the initial one, I'm not going to do it, but you do have this as an option. We'll do a second one where we create this and set it up with the option to remotely encrypt. Folder. There's no more, oh, I choose the bucket, the demo bucket here, loading. There's nothing underneath it um, set up in there. So we're just gonna let it go to the default folder like that. Then we're gonna go ahead and hit submit. Uh, you can also limit the very bottom right here, transfers, uh, speed limits if you need to. Submit, not run since last boot. So we're going ahead and run now, continue. One quick thing I did miss, the folder name up here, YouTube demo, has to match the name prefix I set down here of YouTube demo. Don't forget that step or you'll sit there and scratch your head for a few minutes. You notice there's a two minute jump in the video or a few minute jump in the video where Tom didn't notice that and it was not backing up. It won't give an error. It just kind of spins for a little while. Now that we have the proper prefix set to match the prefix we defined, we're going to go ahead and hit save. And now, which we stopped the backup from running because I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. We say that from the video editing. Video editing magic is great. Now we can start the task, watch it run, and actually synchronize everything to the folder it was supposed to go in. And it's doing so with much less time on the clock now. All right, now that we have successfully backed up all the files, there's a look at the log, and we go over to browse files inside this bucket, which is slash YouTube demo, like we put on there, and we can see them. And what if we wanted to download one of them, like Tom Lawrence's general bio? All right, that looks like a good file. I can download it out of here and probably open it. Yep, there we go. And uh, here's a general bio of me. There we go. Old bio thing that I had. Anyways, I'm able to get those files out. And this is what will obviously make some people nervous. They're going, well, I don't like or trust any of these cloud providers that they might not have an incident. And the best way not to ever worry about that is encrypt everything before you send it. So this is how it would work if it was unencrypted. And of course, sometimes there's a reason to set it up like this. You may want to push things into the bucket because you want to share a file with a lot of people. Then you can make that bucket publicly accessible so other people can get files out of it. Or they have the option here to create the friendly links for these people particular files so they're able to be downloaded out of here. Those are cool features if you need to use them, but uh, let's go ahead and purge everything in here and we can see all the file names and everything, but let's go ahead and RMRF everything. We'll select all delete real quick. I'm sure delete all those files. Absolutely. They're gone. Now let's talk about how to do this with encryption. Go over here to edit, scroll down to the bottom, remote encryption. We need to put a password. Password123 is not a great idea, but um, easy enough for the demo here we're doing. Then you have to add salt. They do have a link here to dive into a little more details of how encryption salt workings. I didn't want to get too off topic in there, but we're going to add our encryption salt, put a little dead sea salt in there and uh, hit save. It's as simple as that for encryption. By the way, make sure you back up this password and salt. If you lose either one of these and cannot remember them, those files will be encrypted forever and you'll never get them back. When you do the system backup of TrueNAS, make sure you back that up properly somewhere where this information and cloud credentials and API keys and extra configuration data is saved. Maybe even keep a document alongside this where you know where all of these things are. So we're going to hit save. 
and we're just going to run this again. Cloud Sync demo has started. Wait till it completes, and then we'll look at it with all the encryption. All right, backup successful. Go over here. Go ahead and refresh. And outside of the folder name that it's got to go into, everything else is completely encrypted. So even the folders, the directory structure is now in a format that I can't make heads or tails of, which is exactly what you want. You don't even want to let anyone infer metadata about what the value of those documents might be. That's why it encrypts all, not only the contents of the files, but the names of the files as well. So I can recognize there are some structure here in terms of, you know, some different folders, but everything is encrypted. So wonderful. Now you can still download and share these, but they're not of much good if someone were to get a hold of them. And that's, like I said, this is what's really important. Now, any backup without a restore is just, well, wishful thinking. You should test the restore process to make sure that it works. There's a couple options we have for doing that. We can go and click restore. Now, restore doesn't just grab and restore it. Restore is going to do copy from source, copy to destination. If files in the same namespace are present, they will be overwritten. And this gives you the option to give this a description and create a restore process that goes somewhere else. Because maybe you need something restored, but you don't want to overwrite what's there. Sometimes this is one of the issues that occur. Now, this is not granular. I don't get to go through a list and select a single file to restore. This is more of a disaster recovery situation. You should be using something like snapshots in order to create more revisions to make that part easier. This is for your offsite backup. So I'm going to cancel this, though, because all we're going to do is flip it the other way from push to pull. This is all that task does is create that for you and have it be somewhere else, but let's go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead and delete all the files that are in here. Yep. Everything's gone. There are no files in this. That means we can go here and pull. And when you do a pull, instead of sync because we're not synchronizing there's nothing here we're just going to switch it right to pull and copy give me everything that was over here and bring it back so let's go ahead and hit save and we're going to go ahead and run it real quick run now continue and because it's the same password and salt combo, this should take no time at all to grab the files, download them, and all the decryption now is occurring inside the TrueNAS system with quite, good, quite a bit of speed here. We have a faster download than we had upload. There we go. All the files are back. Now let's go ahead and rm-rf the LTS logo files and talk about setting this up as a sync task. So now we've deleted that, but I need to pull that back down. So we're going to edit and we could do a full one, but now we're going to do a sync. So figure out what's different between what I have here. This is kind of granular, but in not a completely you kind of get the idea. It's going to synchronize whatever's missing, but it may have some issues if there's some file conflicts and they may get overwritten for changes. So be careful if you are doing this, but I know someone will want to know if you can do a sync that way. Yes. And we'll go ahead and run that. It's going to do a quick comparison and download what's missing. And those are back. So it will do granular restore, but granular as in figure out what's missing and put it back. That way, if you just oops one folder and you reverse it and do a synchronization, it can do that. But it does have to build that index. That's why when you first switch it, it wants to do a full copy over everything on there. So be careful when you're doing this that you don't break something, screw it up. Um, this is anytime you're doing restores, do them extra careful. I usually do them to a different folder, but you can just restore a folder with it. Now, we've been using Backblaze, like I said at the beginning, for a number of years. It's been a great service. We've been using it for a while to back up even all the videos on this channel and many other things that we have. The videos we don't encrypt, everything else we do um, because I'm not worried about the videos. As a matter of fact, if I dump a bunch of video data in there, 
being able to have a bucket where I can just download a video back out when I'm off site or to send to someone if I need to um, is a convenience is why I don't do those. But everything else I do encrypt because why not? That seems like a great idea. And it's arbitrarily easy to do here in TrueNAS. I think they do a nice job of putting that together. But as I said, always make sure you back it up and never back it up to the same server. Um, when we've dealt with that before where people thought they had a backup on the server and when the server was lost in a disaster they're like oh i saved all the key files for the encryption keys on a text file on that server somewhere make sure that's backed up to physically separate however you want to do it um that, that's just something i try to remind people i never like getting a call and telling people i can't recover their data even though they have their login and they have their api key over to backblaze if you lost that encryption that you used to send it there you're gonna have a problem all right Thanks, and I'll leave a link to all my other curated TrueNAS videos. I have a whole new series of them at lawrence.technology. There's links in the description for that as well. Take care. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.